Jamer Candelario, guy that the Cubs traded for down the stretch, played well until he's had some back issues, and he's on the open market right now. We're going to talk about his value, what his projected salary could be, and how the Cubs are going to be a player in that. Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. Guys, I want to remind you that we're presented by the Tennessee Smokies, the Cubs AA affiliate. We want you to go to their place, look at the store, pick out some great gear. With the holidays coming, you want to impress your Cubs friends, hey, check out their team store, tennesseesmokies.com backslash store. All right, he's Chad Anderson. I'm Mick Gillespie. Let's talk about this. Now, nothing's being done yet because obviously we're in the midst of the World Series right now, but that's going to end at the latest this weekend. And then all hell's going to break loose, Chad, because teams yeah. are going to go out there. They're going to try to make some moves. You know, will the Cubs be in the mix for uh, Juan Soto? I think that there's a chance that they will. Will Cody Bellinger end up signing with the Cubs or somewhere else? We're going to pay attention to that. Pete Alonzo. I mean, we haven't even gotten past the World Series yet, and we're already talking about guys that they could add. What about Jamer? Is there a chance that Jamer could be somebody that the Cubs added? And, and the reason why is that this is his projected salary right now, that he's looked at about $15 million for two years. Not $15 million a year, $15 million for two years. He was a difference maker when the Cubs got him. I think they'd have made the playoffs if he wouldn't have gotten injured. Yeah, if he had stayed healthy. Um, and, and you look at – this is a, a topic you and I have talked about on the show – or on this channel uh, a few different times when we've been going through positions and trades and off-season moves and whatnot. And if you look at it, third base is is a spot the Cubs need some help. And some people have said, well, yeah, but Matt Chapman's available this off-season, but that would be a, a potential big contract. Um, you know, Madrigal, is he healthy? What's going on there? Um, you know, is he able to come back? Miles Mastroboni, do you go that route? Christopher Morell, do you go there? Uh, there's a Patrick wisdom. Don't forget about him either. But when I look at this, um, you know, to me, Jamer is the best fit. I, I love him because he's a utility guy too, Mick. And he can play first base. He can be a DH. Mm -hmm. Um, he was actually brought up by the Cubs, made his major league debut with the Cubs before going to Detroit and then Washington and then back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love his bat and the lineup and his versatility. And for me, like if the Cubs priorities are, Cody Bellinger and or Juan Soto uh, or some arms and, and bolstering up that rotation uh, or grabbing Matsui as a closer on the back end, wherever you're going to look at spending some money or trading for Soto to then extend him with a big contract, Mick, where are you going to find a guy like Jamer to fill in and get what you know you're going to get um, for two years at 15 million? Like, uh, we've talked about one position. I don't mean to pick on the guy. It's just a, a contract that comes to mind. The Cubs paid eight or nine million for Tucker Barnhart. So you're telling me I get Jamer for less per year than what they were paying Tucker? Like to me, it just seems like when you're comparing certain players and contracts the Cubs have had, um, two years at 15 million, if you can truly get that, uh, that ought to be a slam dunk because it plugs in a hole and it, keeps your payroll um, pretty freed up to be able to go over and, and make those other deals that you're hoping to make. Well, let's pull up his stats. I, I, I do want to kind of take a look at, at his projected, well, his numbers first before we get into anything else. But um, with the Cubs last year, he hit 234 and he had a 318 on base percentage, right? Uh, six home runs, 17 runs batted in in 41 games. You know, he, he was playing hurt a little bit. Um, he, for the season, when you take his numbers with the Nats and the Cubs, he hit 251 and uh, had 22 home runs and 70 batted in, and he played in 140 games. So he was, uh, you know, some games short because of the back injury at the end of the year. I felt like he was kind of coming into his own uh, when, you know, he – was traded to the Cubs. The, the the issue that I have 
is where what are they going to do with what they've got in the minor leagues right now? Like, when are they going to? Because if you sign him now, you're taking an opportunity away from someone else. And this this farm system, I'm telling you, there's a wave of guys that are coming. I mean, this is a stacked system right now. A, a B.J. Murray, someone who's going to want to get some time at the big leagues. Great eye was the MVP of the uh, AA championship series. He was in the Futures game. He's going to be close to coming up. Um, I don't know that he's as good defensively as Candelario. Uh, I don't know if he's ready. You know, it may take two years. Maybe that's the case. What do you do with Christopher Morrell? You know, there's been some talk that they may trade him to the Padres if they had a real Juan Soto deal. But I, you got to find a spot for him in the field. You know, like you, you can't have a, you know, a 20, a kid playing in the DH spot. You know, you want a really professional hitter in that area. The, he's too talented, too athletic not to be in the field helping out. Where do you put him? You know, because that's going to take a spot away. Now, with that said, if they don't sign Cody Bellinger, then maybe this is an answer to that. And you say, okay, well, he can play the corners and 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 then you have him play first base as you try to develop Matt Mervis. I like that a lot better than Eric Hosmer and Trey Mancini, which is what the Cubs did last offseason. Yeah. Jamer to me seems like a much better fit in that spot. Uh, he's not an all-star, but he's a he's a good player. I'm just looking at the the roster and going, okay, you got all these outfielders that you have in your system. Pete Crow Armstrong, um, Alexander Canario, Kevin Alcantara is eventually going to get there. You know, uh, I feel like I'm missing somebody in that mix. Um, Jonathan Peraza. Oh, you say oh, Casey? Yeah, no, I yeah. did not. Jonathan Perlaza, who was in AAA last year and did well. And then you mentioned Owen Casey, who's going to be in AAA this year. It's a lot of outfielders. Um, infield-wise, you know, are you going to give a Jake Slaughter a chance? Um, that's something that the, the, I feel like the, I could see him being in a package to someone else because he's put up great numbers, and, and, and I don't know that the Cubs really feel like he's – he, to me, is like the Javier Assad – of third base, but it's, but you play second as well, you know? Um, so I'm just curious. I mean, I'm just in, 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 you know, Matt Shaw, you just, you drafted him as a shortstop with your first round pick. He's in double a, a lot of those guys are going to be vying for spots in the big leagues. So that, so roster management wise, it's not necessarily the two year, $15 million deal that he's projected to get. It's, how does that fit into the game plan that the Cubs have? Or do they have a game plan? And I got to give Theo so much credit because I felt like he had a game plan from the time that he got to Chicago until they won the World Series. He executed it. And 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 after that, it was tough for him to find that same – it just didn't work the same anymore. But, but from the time he got there until the time they won in 2016 – you could just feel all of the momentum. Jed Hoyer's going to have to do the same thing. How does this move fit in there? Uh, I mean, you're spot on um, with everything. So, and and you bring up so many good points. And let's really quick go back to Juan Soto. So, if if they pull that trade off, Mick, what happens? You've already got Suzuki and right. You've mm-hmm. got half and left. You assume you have either Bellinger or PCA in center. I would go PCA, and then you got Belly at first if you re-signed him. Mm-hmm. So then where where does Juan Soto go? Well, obviously Juan Soto goes anywhere because he's your best outfielder, but my bigger point is like who gets cut, who gets moved out of that outfield? I mean, do you get rid of Hap? Do you move Suzuki to left? Do you put Soto in left? Like, What do you do in those situations? Um, and you're right. Roster management is such a key part. Now, if you – if you get Soto, it's going to cost prospects. So some of those guys will just be moved to San Diego. Right. But, but you're still, the, the farm is so loaded that you're right. You will still have guys who are going to be pushing up going, hey, you know, when, when am I getting my at-bats? When am right. I getting my turn? And But just the outfield alone, like you don't pass up on Juan Soto, but just the outfield alone, like what do you do there? And then you're right with Jamer. Um, the bat, the glove, 
versatility. Um, you know, from what I understand, a good clubhouse guy, and you're getting it for such a good deal at that valuation. Uh, but you're right. You you do run out of room, and but it's a good problem to have if you're Jed Hoyer. Yeah, that is. Uh, I, what I don't want to see, though, is another Jose uh, Quas trade where you give up a everyday corner outfielder with a ton of power for – a middle reliever, you know, like yeah. you, 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 the, I guess the off seasons where you can attack, you know, and get the real value for these guys instead of waiting. Last year's trade deadline was just not the time to, to really try to do anything where you got fair value for both players. You know, it just isn't, you know, the Cubs are going to look back and I know some of you guys in the comment section have disagreed with me. I'm telling you, the Cubs are going to look back at those trades and they're not going to be happy about the result yeah. long term when DJ Hers is a number two starter for the the Nationals, and um, you and know, and and, and Nelson's hitting a bunch of home runs, and 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 brutal. you feel like you felt when you were looking at Jorge Soler over there, right? With that said, it does soften the blow a little bit if you sign Candelario because at least it's not like you you gave up, you know. You gave up the shortstop. I didn't see him. I, I saw the the pitcher to the Nationals, and then if you get this guy and you keep him around, you know, hey, at least you're like, well, you know what? We had him for three years. But it's all about roster management and moving forward, you know, what's going to happen there. And and maybe there's guys like Ian Happ are expendable now. You know, you could trade an Ian Happ because you got guys that can slide right into that spot that are going to cost you less money if there's a market for Ian Happ. I don't know that there is. Uh, same thing with Suzuki. And I know Suzuki played really well last year at the end of the season. I don't know that he, what even his contract looks like, but I'm just telling you that there's going to be other guys that can jump into those spots. And if you make a trade for Juan Soto, this was the last thing I was going to say, is I don't look for the Cubs to sign Cody Bellinger. I think that I just don't. I, I mean, you could, but if I'm the Cubs and I'm bringing in Juan Soto, I'm not bringing him in as a one-year rental. I'm going to try to trade and then sign him to a long-term deal and 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 the franchise be built around him. And that's not a bad guy at all to build your franchise around. He's already won a World Series. He's one of the best hitters in baseball. And he's still really young. He's only 24. So that's the, that's the age of a lot of the guys that are going to be coming up from the minor leagues right now. And this guy's already a star. He's already done everything. So that's the why, the reason why I think he's so valuable. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Give us your opinions. What do you think? Is Candelario worth it? Is that a good trade? And then sign for the Cubs, or do you let him walk? Is two years and $15 million you know, money well spent? I want to hear from you guys as well. Make sure that you're part of our roster. We're going to give you two years and $15 million just to be part of our team. Well, m- Monopoly money.